Welcome back, Booksmiths. This is EG, and on this channel, we talk about AI and how we can use it to be more creative, especially when it comes to creative writing. We're going to get down to business here because I actually launched Crimson Tears, which is a sample codex for Novel Crafter. I wanted to walk with you through how I created this codex from start to finish. When you sign up for it, this is what the page looks like. And there's a video that walks you through how to use it. And not only did I go into, you have the exact prompts that I used, as well as the workshop chats that you need to create this as well. I showed you two different ways of creating scene beats, as well as I went into actually creating a book cover for the book as well. And then down here at the bottom, we have the video on how to create custom categories. That was a question that has come up quite a bit for people that have been using the sample codices. And I also added some frequently asked questions with regard to that, like, can you just import? And the answer is no, importing is not available yet. If you want to get access to this, we've been having some issues with the links. The links for some reason haven't been working. So I'm actually going to put a link to this page here. This is the free resources link and you can come down here to get a copy of Crimson Tears. Cypher Shadow is here as well if you haven't picked it up already. So this one is more of a cyber thriller one. Crimson Tears is a pulp noir crime thriller. So a little bit different. And then also we have uh, a Camp NaNoWriMo word tracker because Camp NaNoWriMo uh, for June actually starts in two days. Yikes. And then I also have this Notion second brain that you can get access to as well. So um, I will put this link in the video description below and you can get your copy. Let's head over to Novel Crafter. And I will scroll down here to Crimson Tears. Okay, so the same framework that I used for Cypher Shadow. This is the Lester Dent Pulp Fiction formula, and it's got, I believe, four parts to it. Yep, four parts. And it's meant to write short, pulpy novelettes. So definitely, but it's there to write short stories, but you can use it to write something that is much longer. So just remember, I started out with just the framework. Everything else came after. So for inspiration, I wanted to use the movies Sin City, The Spirit, and Dick Tracy. And so I said, please give me five short story concepts that bring together aspects of those movies. And they should include unique characters and should include original and non-published concepts. So it gave me The Velvet Knives, Murmurs of Midnight, uh, Gold in the Shadows, the Sinister Symphony, and Crimson Tears. Ultimately, I, in, I ended up decided to go with Crimson Tears. Why? I kind of liked the idea of having the good guy become the bad guy and you know, protecting the city. So here are my characters. We've got Ray Red Walters, who is our hitman, who used to be a police officer. We've got Lila Monroe, she is our witness who Red is going to be protecting. We've got the bishop, who is an old mentor for Red and who is going to kind of put Red on this adventure to protect Ila. And then we have Lucky Vance, who is our bad guy. And so if you go back through and you read the concepts, you'll definitely see some of, of all of those movies that I referenced in the beginning. You'll definitely see some aspects of those movies in the, the individual ones. Okay, so I ended up picking number five, Crimson Tears. So I asked it to go ahead and give me a full list of characters for the short story. I pick concept and then I go and I ask for characters. And it's a matter of just layers. So it's one layer after another, and we're just, we're building up information. So we've got, here's our information on red. We've got Lila, the Bishop, and we have Lucky, which we already knew about those from earlier. 
So he, they also went ahead and, and it added in this the butcher, who is a henchman. And then we've got a detective. And we also have a informant whose name is Hank. And then a forensic pathologist. And then we have another bad guy. So henchman, like lower level henchman, who is actually a corrupt policeman who works for Lucky. So these are the main characters and the minor characters as well. And then I took all of these and I added them into the codex here. So we've got all of our characters in here. And here we go. So then what settings are included in the story? So what are the places that this story is going to take place? And so we've got the city, which is called Crimson City, hence Crimson Tears. We've got Fred's apartment, the Bishop's Church, Lucky's Mansion, Hank's Bar, which is called the Rusty Nail, the safe house that Lila was staying in. And then we've got the morgue that Dr. Hart works in, the police precinct, the abandoned warehouse. It also had streets and alleys. So... It's describing the streets and alleys inside of Crimson City, Detective Bendis' office, and then we also have the rooftops, which is very much like the spirit. I thought that was pretty interesting. After that, I went ahead and got that information. I didn't create the codex entries for these just yet. I wanted to learn a little bit more about how they were being used before I went ahead and added them to the codex, because you'll see why. So then I said, for this story, please give me the following. So the title, the pitch, the hook, and the premise. I don't know why I asked for the title. I think it was just part of my copy and pasting. I already knew the title, but it confirmed the title as Crimson Tears. And so it gave me a pitch, the hook, and the premise. And while I keep the hit, the pitch, hook, and premise in my codex, I didn't use these versions. Ask for a revised one a little bit later after we get a little bit more information. And those are the ones I'm actually going to be using inside of the codec. Let's go down here. And so it's just telling you about the story. High level. Okay. And then I ask, okay, how do the characters talk and what do they look like? So these are the most important characters. These are the main characters and the antagonists. Actually, this is protagonist, two supporting characters, and then the two antagonists. So it went ahead and told me, not only how does he speak with his you know, mouth, but as well as how does he communicate with his body as well. So he's gruff, concise, no nonsense. So think about how is that going to look when he is talking. And then also the appearance. So again, this is a very short, very to the point. And we'll talk about how I included this in the codex a little bit later, but I went ahead and did this for the most important characters. Okay. Now I wanted to ask some questions for clarification because it talks about the fact that Ray was framed for a crime that he did not commit. And so I wanted to find out what was that crime as well as who framed him and why? So what was the end game for the whole thing? And so it gave me this information. Apparently he was framed for this murder of this person. And it was, he was framed by Lucky and the corrupt police officer. And they did it to try to eliminate him as a police officer who wasn't able to be bought as well as to set an example to other people that they weren't untouchable. I, I thought that was kind of nice that it, it wasn't just to get rid of the threat, but it was also to use him as an example to keep people under their thumb. And then it also tells us how it was done, which I thought was really cool. So fabricating evidence, ma manipulating the witnesses, they manipulated the media as well as sabotaging the internal investigation. So that was really kind of cool as well. And then it also talks about the impact it had on Ray red same guy and so it destroyed his career and then it really made him super bitter so he you know he now has this thirst for justice and it's turned him into a hitman 
but he's a hit man with a heart. Wow, I feel like Hallmark right there. So th- that was just a little bit of a sidebar. Hey, this wasn't really clear. And I know a lot of times when I go through these, I don't dig very deep. But this is one of those instances where there was a crime that he didn't commit. Well, what was the crime? So we, not only did we find out what the crime was, but we find out how and why it impacted him. So this is the kind of stuff that you need to do. So next up to provide the book Bible entries for each location. And I, I put this very specifically, including any information an AI writing assistant would need to know about it to use it as a setting. What does the AI need to know to be able to write the setting? And so it goes through all of those places that we talked about. So it goes through Crimson City. What are the key features? How is it used as a setting? So it talks about the apartment, the church, the mansion, the bar. We have the safe house again, the morgue police precinct, abandoned warehouse, those streets and those alleys. And remember, if you are in the Crimson Tears file, this entire chat, the whole thing completely copied for you. So you can go line by line and see and go through and read all of this. And then I also have where it's just the prompts. So you can just grab the prompts if you want to go in and create your own thing. So we've got those streets and those alleys the uh, detective's office, again, the rooftops. Okay. And then now that we have done a little bit more digging, we're a lot clearer on who the characters are. We know what's happening, where things are actually happening. We can go through and we can refine our pitch, our hook and our premise. And so with this additional information, it actually generates the refined pitch, hook and premise that has a little bit more meat in it. And so it's definitely a lot more specific. So this is the pitch, the hook, and the premise that I put inside of the codex. This is the point where I use the framework. Before this, it was just the chat and the framework. Using the framework, and I called it out by name, so it would go and grab that codex entry, create an outline, So the outline was created later. It's a uh, codex entry that I created later on for this story. And so it used the Lester Dent framework and it created this outline. If you go through and you read it, it tells you what happens. Okay, so now we're going to convert the outline because at the end of this, I created this, I turned it, in, it, the outline into an entry. So it was its own entry. So convert the outline into a scene list for all of the scenes and the story. And they're going to be told, Alex's perspective. And actually should have just said it was going to be told from Red's pers- uh, perspective. And you want to end a scene where there is a change in venue or a setting. So then it took, it went through and it created a number of scenes and it tells you where the scenes occurred as well. So I think it was 22 scenes. Yeah. So it's got 22 scenes and this book actually leaves you on a bit of a cliffhanger so that if you wanted to write a second one about Lila and Bray, you could do that. And so the next question was, what genre is the story? Because I wanted to fill out this genre box. So in this case, it's a pulp noir crime thriller. And so that's what I went ahead and put in there. And then I also asked it to provide a style guide that the AI can use to write the prose. Because I like to have the AI take a stab at it. And then I edit the crap out of it. That's how I like to work. And it's going to be told in first person from Red's point of view, past tense. So it goes into narrative point of view, tone. It gives some examples of what some of the lines could be. It talks about the dialogue, the description. So it's going to be sparing detail 
and the noir aesthetic as well. And it just gives some examples. Internal monologue, an, an example as well as the internal monologue. It talks about action scenes, the setting, as well as symbolism. The AI loves symbolism. Okay, we got mood and atmosphere, characterization, and that's it for this chat. So this is what gave me everything here in the codex. So there's our hook, our pitch, and our premise. And then that's here's the scene list that it gave me. The outline. Okay, so, and again, I talked about the characters. With the characters, remember I had how they talk and what they look like separate. And the reason I did that is so I could do that as nested references. So I have nested references here for the appearance and the, the, the way that they communicate. And I try to keep how people talk separately so I don't have one long list. But it m more comes back to their appearance. So if you're talking about this person's piercing blue eyes and it keeps coming up over and over and go over, as the AI likes to remind everybody and beat us over the head with what people look like, you can actually come in here after you've already established what these people look like and you can just disconnect it. You can remove the reference. I included quite a bit of aliases and nicknames, not only for the characters, but also for the locations as well. So people like the bishop, if I don't say the bishop, it doesn't call him. So if, if I don't use the nickname of bishop, I have to literally put the bishop. Same thing here for Bruno. I would have to say his entire name to be able to call him into a scene. But that's why I went ahead and I added, we can either call him as Bruno or the butcher as well, especially with this de detective Mar Mendez here as well, because she's got her full name as well as detective Mendez or Andy or Andrea. So I wanted to make it super easy to make sure that you could call the characters and the locations into whatever you're creating. So if you come down here to the abandoned warehouse, again, its nickname is warehouse. The Bishop's Church is, nickname is Church. Morgue, City Morgue. Now, remember when I had talked about earlier, I talked about the city streets and alleys. I actually put that as a nested reference here for Crimson City. So because they are connected. Um, let's see what else. So the detective's office, I said it as office because it's the only office that is mentioned. Same with the Lucky's Mansion. I just called it Mansion as well. So the mansion. So it actually would call this entry. And then this is one that I added the other day accidentally when I was creating something that can go away. Then under others here, we've got the appearances and the communication styles, as well as the pro style guide and the story genre, which we've talked about as well with elements of crime fiction and thriller in here as well. These are the only ones that are actually labeled as AI and that are going to be included every time you send something to the LLM. It's going to include the pro style guide and the story genre. So everything else should be called by name when it's mentioned. Let's move on. I want to go through these beats. And then I want to talk about the blurb and then we will talk about the book cover. Actually, we're not going to talk about the book cover this time. We will cover that in another video because I want to do that separately. So remember, we have this scene list here. So I wanted to create scene beats for the first scene. Here we go. One thing I've got to tell you about this earlier is I use the film noir dev editor, which is linked. You can actually get that set up for your novel crafter. That is a chat prompt and I use GPT 4.0. Everything should have been labeled and shared. I tried to make sure you guys got everything. 
So this one is actually scene beats from summary. Where are you? Under S. Here we go. It's actually a system prompt that I went ahead and used. And then the second one I did, we I used this active scene beats from summary, which I also shared with you guys. So let's go look at this. All I did was I said, please give me a list of scene beats for chapter one. And the context down here is full outline. And it just tells you he is doing a hit and he receives a phone call from the bishop. And so these are super short beats. So I was like, can we do better? The answer is yes, we can. So uh, I went ahead and I used this active scene beats prompt. Uh, the active scene beats prompt uses some of Mira Gold's active scene beats in it. And it gave us a little bit longer beats as well as a transition from one beat to the next. So again, it used the same prompt. We're also using GPT 4.0. So please give me a list of scene beats for chapter one. Again, context is the full outline. And then it gives us the hook is the first beat. So it gives us the description of the beat and then the transition. Then the build up, beat, transition, beat description, and then the transition. Escalation, description, transition. So it just goes through each of those things and it ends on a cliffhanger because it's trying to keep the people from finishing one chapter and they want to go immediately to the next one. Okay. Let's go here. So blurb copywriter is something that I created a while back using the hook pitch and premise. Please write me a blurb for this story. And so it gives us this nice big blurb that we can use. You definitely want to go through and make sure that you read through it very well. It is a bit much. I don't know that I would be name dropping all of these people in here, but it gives you what I ended up using it for was to come up with a concept for the book cover and you can actually see. So I actually created the concept in ChatGPT, and then I went into mid journey to actually make it happen. So that's my process for doing covers. I like the concepts that come out of ChatGPT, but the images usually are lacking. And there's also a, a limited number of aspect ratios and it do doesn't always do what you ask it to do. So that's why I will get the concept or the prompt from there. And then I'll go into mid journey and then I'll just tweak it to death. It's not great. It's not perfect, but this little five by eight image here is a perfect size to go in the cover spot here and give our project a little bit of a face. So I feel like I've gone over everything. I'm sure I have forgotten something. Please feel free. Leave me a comment. You guys have my email as well. My email is in the documentation or come into the discord, the Byte Writers Guild and ask questions. If you're having a problem, I don't mind jumping on there and we can look at it together and figure out what's going on. We've actually done that a couple times. I hope you guys have an amazing day and happy writing. I can't wait to see what you guys create with us and we'll see you next time.